Dual Review is brought to you by NexusDigitalComics.com. On today's Dual Review, it's Scott Pilgrim, the movie this time. I'm RJ. And I'm Nick. Let's get to it. Welcome to December 23rd. It is so close to Christmas. Yes, and we are going to do Scott Pilgrim the movie. That's right, which came out in 2010, not too long ago. Uh, starring Michael Cera? Sarah? Sarah. Yeah. Sarah? Girl's name. Like Sarah. Sarah. Michael mm. Sarah. You know, I like Michael Sarah in a lot of the things that he's done. Uh, one of my favorite movies uh, that I don't think got enough attention was Nick and Nora's Infinite Playlist. Yeah, it was good. I like that movie a lot. I yeah. own it. It actually has a similar feel, kind of. Well, I think that's the that's the problem with, maybe not the problem with Michael Cera, but you know the characters that he plays, they're all kind of similar. They they're like this sullen, cool guy type deal, and then definitely nerdy cool. I, yeah, I wouldn't say. Well, that. he is kind of sullen. I, maybe maybe that's just Michael Cera that comes off. He was like, brilliant in Zombieland. That he wasn't in Zombieland. I know. I'm joking. It's, oh, it's oh. the other guy that's a lot like him. Wasn't him Josh something? Uh, no, Jesse Eisenberg. Jesse Eisenberg. I went to high school with him. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so anyway, yeah, you know, no, Michael Sarah. When was the first time you saw him? I mean, you know, he's in Juno and yeah, I saw him in Juno first, I believe, and I thought he was great there. I thought I, I love that movie, and he, while he only yeah, had a short role, he was definitely cool. He was like, he was like, oh, you're pregnant, okay. Yeah, he's he's a quirky actor. It is kind of hard to get him out. He was very stereo stereotype. You know, he got stereotypical roles. Right. He's, he's got this certain delivery, and he's got this certain look. Um, but you know, Scott Pilgrim. Now, I talked about the, the comic earlier and how Scott was a little bit different in the comic than yes. in the movie. And they do differently depart. They make him much more nerdy, I think. Because he's kind of hipster nerdy in the Scott Pilgrim. And this one, he's like nerdy nerdy. Like, Okay, you have to start referring to him as, as comics and, and movies because you can't just say this Scott one Pilgrim, and that one. Scott Pilgrim. Yeah. In the comics, he's more hipster nerdy. Right. And he, you know, he's a badass fighter, though. I mean, you know, tongue in cheek. Uh, but in this movie, he's... This movie, Scott Pilgrim, the movie versus the world, the movie, on Blu-ray, available you know, now in stores. Uh, <laughs> Thanks for the plug. <laughs> well, I was just trying to delineate nothing. All you have to do is say comic and movie. Okay. In the comic, he's, he's much more hipster. In the movie, he's this nerdy nerd. Right. Um, and it's kind of like a little bit unbelievable for me that he could get like Ramona Flowers and whatnot. You know what I mean? Like I disagree. She's hot. And, and he's not. Yeah. Well, <laughs> so was Nora. And he got her. Yeah, but after much trial and error, you know. Well, I think that's I think that's part of the love of that movie. But I think we're getting too much into that movie yeah. as opposed to this one. Uh, another license that they take is uh, the twins. They're like these techno guys, and you only see them for like five minutes. Yeah. Whereas in the book, you know, they build robots and they have a big old fight and whatever. But I can understand they they use the tropes of the battle of the bands to move things along. Right, right, right. Um, and it's fun to get to hear the music, and nothing beats the the first uh, Matthew Patel. Showing up, I think that's hilarious. That's fun. Oh, that was another thing. Is, My two hipster chicks, right? Right. The the demon hipster the de chicks, the demon or whatever. Hipster chicks. The, yeah, uh, who spit fire or whatever they do fireballs. <laughs> um, that was one of the things that was also different in the comics. Is that he and some of his friends fought sometimes. Right. You know, sometimes right. like Matthew Patel in particular, they all fought. Uh, in the movie, it's just him, and it's never explained that he's a good fighter capable at all he just starts kicking ass and it's kind of like really like michael Sarah doesn't pull that off for me if he was a little bit cooler like mm. like hipster cool i would yeah. kind of see that but it's funny though it doesn't it doesn't like take me out of it or get me you know yeah it works take it me does. a while to get over it. it does and they rely really heavily on making it like a video game which the book kind of does but not quite in the same way right i think the movie pulls off what i love the most video games best well, it's it's brilliant that they did like the P bar, yes. which doesn't show up in the book that I remember, um, but it it's definitely the flavor, the feel of it. And so when they're they're kind of putting things together, making it more concise, like he goes into the bathroom and then comes back out, and he's in that dream world where he's chasing Ramona down the hallway before he meets her, and that's when they throw in the P bar thing, so that it gives you that flavor. Mm -hmm. um, and that's really smart. That was a really good choice for yeah. the movie. Um, I don't know. The casting is great. Yes. Um, it, it's pulled off really well. Like I really like the guy who played the vegan. I've seen him before. I just don't know his name. Or 
the v- oh that that was uh, the guy who played Superman. Yeah, it was really fun. Yeah, it was fun. <laughs> it was really fun. It was a good interpretation. In fact, I like that scene better than the book because hmm. the book, you know, they have the cops too. But in right. that one, it's it's hilarious. And the girl they pick for Ramona's uh, Ramona Flowers, she has huge eyes. Like, she does she has have big eyes. eyes. Yeah. And um, I think that works really well with the book. And she's cute, and she's a little slightly nondescript, but yeah. her hair, you know, gives her away, which is funny because, you know, they play with the hair and the color, and yet the book is in black and white. Right, right, right. So that's kind of fun. Um, I like I like where he, uh, he draws a picture of. Have you seen this girl? And she's like, yeah, girl. right. Which 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 in the book he just goes, "Have you seen this girl with hair like this?" And he puts his hands right, down. So right. it's a little different, but. You know, that kind of license is expected, and yeah, it works really well in this. So, uh, yeah, the movie is uh, directed by Edgar Wright, who also did uh, um, uh, Shaun of the Dead. House, Hot Fuzz, he does a lot Hot of stuff. Hot Fuzz, with, right. With pets, uh, him and his pets. brother created airplanes, which he didn't get the joke to. Uh-huh. Yeah, yeah, right, brothers. <laughs> um, but I, I, and I think Edgar did a, Mr. Wright, did a great job with the movie. Uh, Orville. What? Orville. Orville Redenbacher? No, right. Moron. He just did that joke, and then I continued the joke. I know, but now I'm throwing in a different joke. you got to keep up with me. Redenbacher. Redenbacher. Is it Rickenbacker? Redenbacher. You make the popcorn. Right. So so he does a great job because there's a lot going on in the books, and he has only two hours to fit it all in, which is, you know, anyone doing an adaptation from something, they've really got to either stretch it out or, you know, cap it in. Right. So I think he does a great job because it captures, like, the entire feel of the books, as well as make it almost its own. Yeah, yeah. I agree with that. It is kind of its right. own thing. I mean, like, they, they kind of take out almost wholesale the whole subspace highway through people's right. heads. Like, right. I didn't even get from the movie that it was through his head that she was making deliveries. I, I didn't understand that. They never talk about it, you know. Uh, she just kind of shows up, and it, it makes sense because she's always carrying a package or whatever, and that's how he knows that she's at the door or whatever. I didn't even notice that. Oh, well, see, in the books, it's explained. Yeah. You know, but in the in the, in the But even movie, though, yeah, I, I still didn't even notice it. And I'm then, and then they also jam everything together. So it's right. a little bit unbelievable that he wins Ramona so quickly. Like in the book, there's a little bit of tug of war mm-hmm. and all that stuff. Uh, in the movie, you know, right away, they're... You know, like, do you want to make out? Okay. I mean, there is that that scene where he's he's like, I'm cold, and oh, that's warm. What is that? And then the lights go on, and she's you know like in her brazier, you know, yeah, 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 close to him. And that's the same in the movie as the book. Um, but it takes a little bit longer. And then of course in the book, like they move in together and they have this whole you know uh, relationship right. stuff that Figured they don't have like... in the movie. I, I think that it, it basically essentially makes Ramona more of a two dimensional goal. Than anything else, she's not really oh, from, a character in the movie. Own. Yeah, in the yeah, movie, absolutely. In the movie, it removes what makes Ramona Ramona, except for like her image. So it's really about Scott and how he's drawn to this right. mythical. Thing. And I, that is very unfortunate that they make her into a prize almost. Um, well, she is in the book too, but you know she's given a personality. Well, I don't know. They just don't spend much time on her in the movie. Right. I, I, well, the the difference with the books, uh, I think, is you know. The only reason that she's a prize in the books is because it's also got that kind of, uh, you know, uh, video game esque, you know, defeat the bosses, win, the, win, the, win the woman over. That that's definitely the stereotypical video game plot line. Uh-huh. Um, yeah, driving force. So in in the movie, when they don't really get into Ramona that much, it she really just does become a prize. Suddenly, you know, I mean, yeah, it is an enjoyable movie, but I am a little detested about the fact that she just becomes a prize. And she allows herself to become a prize. I, I just don't think she's fleshed out. I mean, I, I don't know. I agree. I, I agree. I'm not offended by her or anything. I, I, you're right. You're right. I'm not terribly offended because I, I, you know, the books. I know that she has a character. She was meant to be a person. Just it, in the movie, the translation kind of got shrouded. I guess and it's a little bit more of a situation where, like, when she leaves to go back to Gideon, like in the movie, it, it just happens. Right. In the comic, I mean, it does just happen, but then you find out why. I mean, there's more given to it. And the movie just happens, and you're left to wonder, you know, why did she make that choice? Yeah. So, so it really just removes her as a character and leaves her as this, you know, goal. This Which is unfortunate, but you know, I, I understand it. it you know, yeah, some you sacrifices to need to be made. Having said that, the the movie is really fun, and if you haven't seen it, yes, it is. You probably have, but I guess we we kind of just wanted to approach uh, the comic books and you know how it's different. We want you to read those comic books, right? You owe it to O'Malley. Yeah, I'm. I'm a little afraid that people are just going to start watching movies, and while there's nothing wrong with that, they're going to ignore the other media's that do things well as well. It's kind of too bad, 
kind of too bad that uh, you mean like books, like you read, watch the movie but you never read the book. Yeah, something. but but not only that, even if even if there's a separate movie and a separate book, you know, you can watch the movie and you can read the book, but people are going to choose not to read the book because there's movies out right, there. Right. You know, they're going to miss a great book. Yeah. So um, it's it's kind of unfortunate that they put all the six books into one movie because yeah. they can't really do a sequel unless they come up with a completely different story, which right. would be great. But be interesting. Um, but uh, it is very clever and very fun. Um, the Culkin kid does great as uh, Wallace. Okay, yeah. It's creepy, but funny. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, great, great character. Oh, and um, what's his name that plays Gideon? Swartzman? He does great. Yeah. Which one was Gideon? He's the the end boss. Oh, right, 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 right. <laughs> yeah, that's right. One with glasses, the, yeah. The end boss, the final Swartzman. battle. Yeah. All right, guys, go check it out. Yep. Uh, Watch it again. Friend us on Facebook. Uh, subscribe to us on YouTube. Send us some money. Uh, if you if you feel like it, I like pizza, the stuffed crust, pepperoni, uh, and bacon. <laughs> just send it to Nick just, at Nexus yeah, Digital Please Comics. send it to <laughs> Just put that on the package and shove it in the mail. It'll get to us. Yeah. We'll get it. <laughs> pizza. <laughs> See you guys. <laughs> oh. He just had a wiener schnitzel, too, when you think about pizza. Yeah, I don't know, man. I'm telling you, there must be drugs in that chili, man. Getting the thing the is, like, you eat and your body forgets. I eat and my body remembers. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. See you guys. <laughs> Bye. <laughs> no, it's just that kind of day, isn't it? Next week on Do a Review, it's Arkham Asylum, the comic. Yeah, yeah. Hey, that's my mic. Don't touch my microphone, it's very Don't private. Don't touch mic. Very, very private. Oops. Ha, ha, ha. <laughs> we just went to Wiener Schnitzel. Apparently, has got some German in his throat. <laughs> German Wiener. Oh, and, yeah, it works really well on this. Um, what are you doing? Continue. Okay. Um, Universal Studios. Oh, I was looking for the director, Edgar Wright. I don't know what else he's done. Edgar, he made the planes. What? He made planes with his brother. The Wright brothers. Oh. Jesus Christ, man. It's not funny if I have to explain it to you. Oh. Oh. You're that kind of guy. Oh, Shaun of the Dead? Really? I was not expecting you to go... Well, it would have been fine if you kept going. Well, Shaun of the Dead. You're the one that's supposed to be done the research. Funny. Yeah, but I don't expect you to just stop and start looking through stuff. Well, but you, that's why we have two of us, so you can keep going. Well, no, you're supposed to just sit there and listen to me. All right, fine. Right. Okay, what are we talking about? What's a good way to start? Say it's directed by Edgar Wright. <laughs> Thank you. So, uh, yeah, the movie's uh, directed by Edgar Wright, who also did uh, um, uh, Shaun of the Dead. Quickly, like in the book, there's a little bit of tug of war mm -hmm. and all that stuff. Uh, not too much. It's pretty much in the first book. Not, not that a man can win a woman by tug of war. <laughs> no, the women, the women would win. <laughs> Never mind. What? Are you trying to be funny again? Yes, it's really funny in my head. Well, do it then. No, I can't. It's perverted. Oh. So. <laughs> so yeah. <laughs> you gotta come on, cause it's tug of war. The woman would win the man. It's tug of war. Tug of penis. That, that's right. That's what I'm getting at. It's not war. <laughs> wow, man. Those chili dogs must have had like crack in them or something. <laughs> Avoid the wiener snitch of chili dogs. They have crack in them. I don't know he why. He ate four of them. I ate three in a, hot, in a hamburger. <laughs> chili burger. Chili, oh yeah, that's true. It was a chili burger. <laughs>